Hello guys, hope you all are good. Welcome to another interesting video on process flow understanding. In this today's video, we are going to learn about task sequencing and task sequences. So we are going to learn the properties which are available in task sequence properties and process flow object entities. And we will learn creating process flow using objects in task sequences in process flow. So this will be the model which will be uh, we will be looking at the end of our model building. So this is the exact replica once we complete our modeling. So without wasting much time, let's begin. What we will do is initially we are going to bring the source in a game. Then we will bring three queues. And then we will bring one operator between these two queues and one full clip between these two queues. We will also bring one of the sync here. And now what we are going to do, we are doing basic connection of the source to the queue. So we are transferring the boxes onto this first queue every three seconds. And then the transportation will be taken care by our process flow, which we are going to learn today in this. So I'm just uh, taking this aside and what we are going to do is we are going to transfer the box from this Q1 to Q2 using this operator 1 and from Q2 to Q3 by using operator by using forklift that is transporter 1 and then from Q3 the material will be transported to the sink so this is overall flow of the objects which is going to happen now what we are going to do is basically these are the two process these are the two task sequences we have created so i'll just click here and if you look at this we have task sequences here so what does this task sequence name itself implies so the task sequences name itself implies that when ever we want to make a sequence of tasks then this process flow entities are going to be used so say for example i need to transfer the material from q1 to q2 so which are the task sequences included in this so i need to tell this operator to basically travel to q1 so this is that then i need to load the box then i need to travel to q2 then i need to unload the part and then again i need to travel back to q1 so this is the task sequence so i need to first travel load unload basically travel then unload and then again travel so this is what we create in the process flow here so this is the task sequence one this is the task sequence two so initially what we have done is we have taken a basic source so what we are going to do is we are going to take a source so just i'll delete this and we'll begin the task sequencing for our operator one so what we will do is we will bring the event triggered source so on q1 so i'll make this on q1 on entry so whenever a box enters q1 a token is going to get generated and that we are going to transfer it for acquiring the resource so i'm going to acquire the resource i'm going to select a resource here so we are going to learn this acquire resource and all in detail in our shared assets but till time you can just have a look at what changes we are making the properties of this entity so what we are going to do is what we have done is we have created a resource entity here here we need to select what type of resource so we are referencing it to operator one so once we are acquiring operator what we are going to do is now we are going to create a task sequence so in a task sequence if you would have looked at we have this almost four to five properties in this entity so the first thing is we are going to label a task executor so basically a operator is going to get labeled in this entity so now our operator is labeled as token dot resource then we have another uh, property here that is priority so priority is basically uh, it is a numeric value which is defined 
in order to state the priority of the created task sequence so if you want to uh, have higher priority to this task sequence you need to put a number here so if i put here 10 so the priority is 10 in another task sequence somewhere if it is 100 then that task sequence will have a higher priority so the higher the number the higher is the priority what does this implies is that so that task uh, will get a priority to be done then we have preemption here so what is this preemption we have four functions in this no preempt preempt only preempt aborting active and preempt aborting all so basically this preemptions are uh, taken care when we have multiple tasks or task sequences queued for that particular resource so based on our priorities based on our requirements we can select preemptions so no preempt this is a normal case it will work first available basis whichever task sequences are assigned it will complete that and then they take another task sequence in a queue preempt only is basically it will halt the current task and it will do the task which is coming so this task sequence task will be taken and the task which is assigned to that operator will be sent to the queue of the task sequences if we do preempt a bot active then this task sequence will be taken care by the operator and whichever he was doing or was a coming behind will be aborted so that task will not be done by that operator so that is aborting active and preempt aborting all is like whatever tasks were in the queue will all be deleted will not be done by that operator and this created task sequence will be taken care by this operator so these are four types of preemptions here then we have wait for finish state so this is basically the state you want to assign to this operator or whichever resource that is AGB uh, forklift so this is basically a state you need to assign when the operator has finished his task so whenever a, a operator is idle or you do not have any task sequence so what should be the state assigned to that so we are selecting allocated idle as well then we have uh, which basically token needs to be assigned to the task sequence so the created task sequence you can assign a task a label basically in this property window and then we have assigned task executor to basically we are not using this a lot but this is nothing but again assigning a label to your task executor so these are all the properties of the create task sequence so this is our first uh, entity in task sequences now what we are going to do is we are going to bring travel so in travel we are again having three things we have travel to object we have travel to location and we have agb travel so we'll select this travel to object initially and check so when we select travel to object we have two options or two properties in this entity first is executor slash task sequence and then we have destination so we need to select a destination that is queue so we already selected that the uh, operator should travel to this buffer first and the token is already uh, this is the default token which is again taken from here token dot task sequence so this token is same as the default token we have here so there is no need to change if you are going to change the to label here you need to change the label here whatever label you are going to assign to your task executor or task sequence so we are going to keep it as it is that is token dos task sequence then we have assigned the destination which is q1 then what we are going to do is we are going to tell that operator to load so what we are going to do is token dot task sequence it is same token dot item which we have taken here so we will assign here so the label to that box will be assigned so the token we are assigning a label as item so now for load we are having three conditions suffice first that is token dot task sequence we have task sequence then we have token dot item now we station it needs to load so we are going to select that so this means all our three properties are sufficed then what we are going to do is we are going to tell that operator to travel to the object 
and what object it is going to travel so it is going to travel to q2 so this is what we have so traveling to q2 then what we are going to do is we are going to unload it at that station so we have traveled to that q2 now we are going to unload it at the q2 so we have token dot item token dot task sequence and we have this q2 where it is going to unload then we are going to tell him to travel back to our q1 because from there only he is going to lift another new part so that is what again i am specifying to it now what is we have completed our task sequence because this was our task sequence to travel load travel unload and again travel back so we have completed our task sequence so we are going to finish that task sequence by using this entity that is finish task sequence if you look at this we have this finish task sequence as a second entity here and then what we are going to do is we are going to release our acquired resource which you already acquired here we are going to release that resource that is very very important because we are unless and until we are not going to use that entity the operator is not going to get freed up and then we are going to use our sync so this is our process flow completely ready and now what we are going to do is we are going to try it running so i will just run this slowly and what we will do is we will check out so if you look at this our task sequence which we created for this operator is working fantastically and the way we want so if you look at that operator is traveling to q1 then it is loading that box traveling again back to q2 and then it is unloading there so this is our created task sequence so we have understand it uh, using this so we understand it the property of create task sequence then we have understand it the property of travel and then we have understand it using load function unload then we have used travel then we have used finish task sequence so basically this is the part 1 for task sequences in the part 2 we are going to connect this forklift and we are going to create another task sequence here or we are going to link this task sequence to this forklift so that this forklift is going to transport the material from q2 to q3 so in part 2 we are going to create another task sequence for this forklift and we are going to understand the properties and the use of these travel functions travel to location agp travel delay in our next videos so till then take care stay tuned if you haven't subscribe to our channel do subscribe to our channel share it with your friends do like our videos so we will meet in another video of part 2 of ts so till then stay simulating bye bye